Dr. Rhea Corbin Hart and here at Harsons Point I work as the Client Relations and Activities Coordinator. What were you doing prior to the pandemic and how did you get here? Prior to the pandemic I was working privately at emergency and general practitioner clinics and also working for myself doing house visits as a doctor. Uh, that's what I was doing before and then when I came here I came here to work as a doctor uh, because I wanted to help Barbados. I felt like I needed to be a part of it. I saw the need and I saw that I had a bit of time on my schedule, a bit, and I called Dr. Ford to see if there was any availability. The experience, I would definitely say that this experience so far in my 30 few years of life has more than likely had the biggest impact on me out of everything that I've done, both mentally um, and physically, but definitely mentally. Um, but I'm very happy that I went through it because although there were challenges and there were fears, it helped me to grow as a person and that can only be beneficial to me going forward. So when I first started, I remember being extremely scared. Um, obviously it's in the back of your mind worrying about your family. I had a young son at that time. He was just over a year when the pandemic hit and I was indeed worried, but when I f came for the training, I recognized that with the training and the supplies that the QBH board would have given to the pandemic workers, I realized that we were in a pretty good stead with those supplies and that no, there was nothing to fear about, but it helped me feel more comfortable. Okay, so first of all, the training obviously entailed how to dress in the PPE, which was the most important part or the part that everybody would be wondering about because we were not accustomed to wearing PPE. I would have been trained in donning, which is what we call putting on PPE, and doffing, which is taking off PPE. I would have been introduced to that back when there was the Ebola scare a few years ago. However, it never reached our shores, so the actual experience of doing it, I never had. So that training helped me to feel more comfortable. Um, other training included just obviously reiterating, obviously from medicine I would, I would already know about infections and how they're spread, but just reiterate, reiterating how this particular infection was spread and how we, would need to in, in, how we would need to protect ourselves when we go in to see the patient. So we had to learn or change our ways a bit compared to how it was at the hospital. So at the hospital you could walk up to a patient any patient, you forget something, you just walk back over. Um, but we had to recondition our mind and plan exactly what we would do when we go into the patients, what we would need, anything that we use inside. We had to think carefully, will I need it when I come back out? My notes that I'm going to take, yes, I will need them. How will I get those back out without contaminating the facility? So it was definitely interesting that Yes, I had been a doctor for nearly 10 years at that point, but I had to recondition some of the thinking in order to prevent the spread of the infection among the for myself and for my family and the staff as well. And just for the, your day at work, yeah, what does that mean to you? In the beginning or now, it's changed quite a bit, but in the beginning, um, when COVID was new, so in April 2020, my average day was interesting. I would literally, at that time, I was working at Paragon. That's where I started. Um, well, Blackman and Gullet was open as well, but most of my shifts were at Paragon. So I would drop my son by my mom. I would go to work, at work. I would shower um, when I'm leaving. And then I would uh, go to my house away from my mom to shower again, then go pick up my son. That's what I was doing um, initially at that point. You know, nobody really knew how bad this was. Um, as much we were learning on the job, I would Lysol everything. Um, the car door handle, I literally had drips running down. I mean, I look back at it now and laugh, but then I was scared. Um, my stomach would be in knots. I was so scared. I would Lysol the handle of the car, everything, steering wheel, everything. Not saying that those precautions are not done now. But we recognize that if you do certain precautions while you're here, that it helps tremendously. Um, so mask wearing, now that the doffing has become second nature, you know, we can doff now without having to think as much because it's become second nature. Now I understand that once you stick to the protocols 100% while you're at work, that the risk of infection um, is 
nearly zero or just at the same level as any other citizen of Barbados. So my day has changed a bit in terms of that. In terms of my work, well, obviously that has changed in that I am not clinically assessing and treating the patients, but my role of ensuring that everything else they need is covered in addition to activities, that also helps to treat the patients as well. As you know, it would not, it, it's not just medicine or it's not just medications or blood pressure. It's just social well-being of a patient. So everything that could happen, has happened, has come to me, and I would have to find a way to fix it from persons needing things from at home but their entire family is in quarantine to having lost their charger for their phone at quarantine and have no way to contact their family to needing flights rebooked but have no local phone to make the call. Anything social or outside of medicine would come through me to help that I can help them with is what I would have done. I would be doing now. Um, and sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Totally. Yeah, you're going to have to edit that. Yes. Forgot what I was going to say. But right, all those things would come through me to assist the patients outside of medicine. And given the fact that I was a doctor, or well, I still am a doctor, but given the fact that I actually worked in COVID as a doctor, a lot of the times persons had challenges just coping with the entire scenario, coming to Barbados with their family for their paradise holiday. And then, you know, one person or some of them have COVID, others don't or have not tested positive yet, being split up. That's a lot to deal with and that's a lot to cope with. And I would have found myself, because they reached out to me as client relations, um, somewhat counseling them. Now we have the psychologist on board. She's able to definitely assist with that. 100% as well, but definitely able to, to help persons through the scenario and to explain to them why it's actually beneficial from a medical standpoint for them to be here. So just having that crossover was definitely, I would definitely say, is create a niche that one may not have thought of before, but know that I'm living it and experiencing it as the first client relations uh, person, I think in Barbados, because uh, QBH doesn't have one. Definitely, I would say, is definitely been a help, and the patients have also said the same thing. Well, definitely, I've found that, like I said, that niche of being able to marry medicine with social well-being, I would definitely like to continue along that path. I don't know of it being a big thing on our landscape, but I would love to continue on that path and possibly be able to help QBH as well, because from my days at the hospital, there are things that patients usually need addressed that the nurses and the doctors would assist them with, uh, take time out of their busy schedule for their, you know, their stipulated job to assist them with. And I think that if there's a role dedicated to it, it would help um, their stay a whole lot more and their psyche and their ability to cope with being at, in hospital or being ill.